Hello guys and welcome to another video of Spobits YouTube channel. So today we will uh, tactically break down another football game for you. And this weekend a big game in the Premier League, one, one of the uh, derby, one of the derbies this Sunday. It was a North London derby between Arsenal and Spurs. It took place at Emirates and the home team uh, won the game as uh, you might have known by a margin of 4-2. So, uh, an interesting game it was if, if, if we just uh, summarize it in a way and Una Emery again got it uh, right tactically not in the first half but the changes he made at half time was very crucial to how how the game panned out so we will see how Una Emery's changes uh, turned the game in favor of Arsenal after half, half time and they eventually won the game so at the start of the game uh, Spur, uh, uh, Spurs went with the diamond formation just like last week against Chelsea. They had Sissoko and Eriksen flanking defensive midfielder Eric Dyer, and Dali Ali was playing as a number 10. Son had a free roll around the uh, striker Harry Kane, and the back four had uh, Jan Vertonghen and uh, John Foyt as a central defensive partner, and Serge Aurier and Ben Davis were the fullbacks. For Arsenal, they played three at the back against Bournemouth, the 3-4-2-1 formation. And they went with the same formation uh, uh, on Sunday as well. Leno in goal, Mustafi, uh, Socrates holding as the three central defenders, Bellerin and Kolasinac at wing backs. I think that, that partly the reason why Emery has played three at the back is Kolasinac and Bellerin are better uh, full backs when they are in the opposition half. So trying to uh, lessen their defensive duties and increase their job of going forward and uh, causing trouble to the opposition was I think partly the reason why they had three centre backs. And they have the midfield duo of uh, Granit Xhaka and Lucas Torreira and the front three. Alexi Bobi and Henrik Mkhitaryan, the supporting forwards and Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, the striker. So in the first half, in the first 20-25 minutes, if you say, and the, the central areas of the pitch was very, uh, I would say, very congested. The Arsenal supporting forwards, I should say, the likes of Alex Iwobi and Henrik Mkhitaryan helped the uh, Arsenal midfield to press the ball in central areas of the pitch. They helped Shaka and Torreira to uh, uh, dominate the, the midfield four of Spurs. So in the first 15 to 20 minutes, Spurs were very, very, uh, ba um, uh, very, I think I should say, shook by the fast start Arsenal made. And the moment Arsenal pressed the ball, won the ball, they pulled it wide towards the runs of Kolasinac and Bellerin. And, and, you know, and the reason why, and uh, just because Spurs uh, don't have a wit, they, they, they have a very narrow formation. The likes of Kolasinac and Bellerin were getting a lot of space in wide areas and they were getting one-on-one -on -one against Aurier and Davies and Davis on both sides of the pitch. This was a ploy in the first 15-20 minutes which worked in favour of Arsenal and uh, Arsenal and Unai Emery and Spurs weren't able to cope with it. So at uh, around half an hour, it was a time when Spurs started to get into the game and, uh, and it was a spell around 30 to 35th minute when Spurs scored two goals and turned the game in, in their favour after Aubameyang's early penalty. So Spurs made it 2-1 in that five-minute spell. And in that spell, we saw more of Eriksen, more of Sissoko and more of Ali. And even Dyer was getting into the ball. So if, the, the, if these four uh, generally uh, actually started to play more football and Iwobi and Mkhitaryan were getting a little stretched on other areas of the pitch trying to attack. And these four then started to dominate the game against the two of uh, Xhaka and Torreira. So that's why Spurs ended the first half strongly. I think from the 30th minute till the half-time whistle, Spurs were the better team. They let and they I think they they led 2-1. Even though um, uh, on the count of the early chances Arsenal had, it was uh, not deserved. Uh, Arsenal should be going level at half-time with the chances they created in the first 30 minutes. But still, Spurs. Uh, were good value for the lead uh, on the count of the last 15 minutes. So, uh, fast forward now at half time, Emery made two changes. Emery brought on Aaron Ramsey and Alexander Lacazette. And now I'll just uh, uh, remove few players, uh, uh, few two Arsenal players, and just fit how, uh, how and show you how Aaron Ramsey and Lacazette uh, impacted the game. So, we'll remove Iverby and we will remove Mikitarian now from the frame. And in came Aaron Ramsey. Just 
to move the arrows now as well. Right, so in came Aaron Ramsey for Arsenal. And Aaron Ramsey came and straight away took the number 10 spot. Now, and then uh, Aubameyang was a little shifted here because Lacazette was uh, uh, playing a, a supporting attacking role for him. So Arsenal now virtually were playing with a 3, 4, 1 and 2. Two strikers uh, up front. So what it did is it, it forced Dyer to be more cautious of the runs of the Arsenal attackers. So the, the, so the Spurs defensive midfielder now is now try is now getting very deep. He is now focusing on helping Foyth and Vertonghen mark uh, Aubameyang and Lacazette's run. What it did is uh, now virtually Arsenal have three midfielders and uh, Ramsey, Shaka and Torreira up against three midfielders of Spurs, Ali, Sissoko and Eriksen with Dyer now focusing more on defending the uh, the two strikers of Arsenal, helping the defenders uh, mark the two strikers of Arsenal. So this is where Emery changed the game. I think this is where Emery brought uh, numerical uh, equality in midfield by bringing in Ramsey and Ramsey played very well in the second half in that number 10 role and Lacazette's run was very was very crucial as well. Uh, he really embedded into the game very quickly. So. So credit to these two players who came on at half time and straight away uh, went to the uh, went to the flow of the game and went into the flow of the game and changed the game in, into it in their own favor. So what did uh, I just explain what it did? What Ramsey and Lacazette's uh, uh, Lacazette's inclusion did, did to the team and now uh, he virtually uh, Emmer is virtually challenged the two wing backs of uh, uh, Bellerin and Klaasenac to keep Aurier and Davies in their own half because now. Uh, Arsenal's width now. Uh, uh, Arsenal width. Arsenal's width is coming from these two wing backs. They they are now as well centrally. Uh, I should say centrally overloaded, just like Spurs. So uh, this this is where the, the turning point of the game came. Now Arsenal are more uh, secured, more numbered in the midfield area, which helped them in in the two of the two and all of the three goals. I should say they scored in the in the second half, which eventually turned the game in their favor. One of the goals was Bellerin and Ramsey made, made a late run in this area of the pitch on the sides of Vertonghen, which he always does as an attacking midfielder. Bellerin found him. Lacazette, ma Lacazette made a, uh, a run on this side. Yeah, Lacazette made a run on this side. And Aubameyang was, on, was in the central position. So once Ramsey pulled it back here and Aubameyang with a very good finish to make it 2-2 at the start of second half. And then something similar happened. With the, with a with a different situation for Arsenal's third goal, Ramsey won the ball some somewhere around here with Foyth uh, dwelling on it and Ramsey as a number ten. That's why as a number ten now he's able to, uh, I should say, press the opposition centre forward because he knows he has two central midfielders behind him. He has uh, more security and he has more attacking options. So if he wins the ball in this area and presses and wins the ball he has two runners direct runners at the Spurs back line so once Ramsey won the ball back he found Lacazette in this position whose deflected shot went in for a score of 3-2 at this time I thought okay uh, Arsenal have done a, a very good job Ram uh, Unai Emery has done a very good job to uh, change his uh, system a bit from going to 3-4-2-1 to 3-4-1-2 from going from a bit in the attacking areas to going to very narrow just to uh, uh, deny what, what Spurs were trying to develop in the later stages in the first half. But then in the when 20 minutes remaining, Mustafi hobbled off and it uh, came as a blessing in disguise because Arsenal then brought on Gwyn Josi. I will write Gwyn Josi as Gwyn and then 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 Arsenal were very dominant in midfield and this allowed Torreira to move forward for the Arsenal's fourth goal. Then he made a run beyond the last line of Spurs just because he knew now he has Gwendozi, Shaka and Ramsey behind him. So he, uh, he he had a freedom to make the run beyond the last line of the Spurs defence and beyond even beyond the strikers of Arsenal. And then Aubameyang found him with a very good ball and the Uruguay finished it to make it 4-2. So this is how uh, Arsenal uh, Changed the game in their own favor. Arsenal's manager at halftime changed the game in their own favor. 
And just a quick mention on how Spurs could have done better. I think the tough week they had after beating Chelsea, they had a tough game against Inter Milan. So they, Pochettino might should have been more proactive, I guess, in the early parts of the second half. Especially knowing that Arsenal now have changed the game. They now have more numbers in midfield. They now have more uh, physical domination in midfield. So he, he could have brought on Harry Wings and uh, Lucas Moore at the same time. What Harry Wings could have done is Ericsson was feeling a little leggy in the second half. So Harry Wings could have added more energy. And what Lucas Moura could have done is added width to the Spurs attack. What it could have surprised uh, Arsenal. Then uh, the light and then Son could have gone in this way. Lucas Moura. Just imagine Lucas Moura being brought on around the hour mark. So then and Son going this way. So what this could have done is force the Arsenal wing backs back. And Moura and Bellerin. Uh, uh, testing their wing backs, and that this could have also forced the likes of Gundozi and Shaka to help the wing backs, which could have uh, again opened Spurs' uh, chances in the central areas of the pitch. So this is where Pochettino lost the plot. He didn't read the uh, the changes Emery made in in his in the Arsenal's favor. So this is how, this is the the derby. So minute margins settled the game, and Emery was very brave to make two changes at half time not many managers do that really because you know the repercussions especially in the in the derby games if you get it wrong the two the double change in the half times it can be it can come back and haunt him but he read the game he 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 analyzed where he went wrong in in the shape he deployed in the first half and uh, rectified it at just at, at the interval. Didn't wait for 15 to 20 minutes after the break. That okay, let me see if my original starting lineup is able to cope or not. He just went for it. He went for goals. He went for midfield supremacy, and it uh, it paid off for him. And in the end, Arsenal won the game and much deserved to the Gunners. So that's it from the tactical section, tactical breakdown of uh, the Arsenal versus Spurs game. Hope you uh, enjoyed the video. Smash the like button if you enjoy the video, and subscribe to the Sportbits YouTube channel for, for for more videos like this in the future. Thanks a lot.